Look at me, I'm king of the castle. Yeah. King of the castle, king of the castle, look at me. I have a chair. All right. Yeah. All right, boys, are we starting? I think we started. All right, cool. We officially started. We're all just in our socks. Yeah. Yeah, this is really cozy. Just socking it up. Can't walk around my house with just socks on because I just get covered in dog hair. <laughs> yeah. Like Zach was doing it yesterday or the day before, and I looked, and it just looked like he had, like, furry feet. Ew. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, I imagine he he is a descendant of Bigfoot, though. <laughs> he is. He's a, a bit of a creature. Yeah. I think it would be the. You were telling me like, point. oh, I listen to your po- I listen to your podcast. Uh, you know, hey, I, I think you could be a little more racist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got uh, one minute and nineteen seconds in before the talk of racism came up. So that's a new record for David. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't one minute. That's because we had to sync up everything. That's <laughs> 30 seconds max. 30 yeah. seconds. Speed yeah. running this bitch. Probably like 20 seconds. Now, uh, so I have uh, for my birthday roast uh, you in consideration for to be one of the roasters. And I've already like started like writing like my response roast to yours. Hell and yeah. the intro is good. Like is going to just crush you. It's going to be right. so good. All right. I didn't even write shit yet. <laughs> yeah. How many people are, are going to roast you? Uh, I think it's going to be like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe like 20 minutes for the actual roast. So everybody will probably get like two to three minutes. Oh, shit. Just off the, t- like a actual roast, like the roast of Tom Brady yeah, like type a po- shit like, where you sit on a little, like a, a King Castle chair. Yeah, like a podium. And I'll be in a chair, and you guys will be at the podium. Is there like is there like rewards for? No, it's wins? all in good fun. It's a roast. Yeah. If any, I feel like people are just gonna be like, oh, jelly roll. <laughs> you yeah, always get that. Hey, I swear, like well, most of the people are gonna be. You look like. Yeah, that's, and that's kind of the, the thing. I don't want it to be like any you look like, type thing because that's yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, that while that is like one of the most fun styles of yeah. roasting, that's not like a traditional. You got to get roast. like a Patrick Eady involved. That uh, would be. Well, I feel like I'll pick the right people and I feel like um, I'll explain like the format of what I want yeah. so that they can meet that. Someone with just enough bite to it, you know, because those are always the most fun. Yeah. And then I think what I'm also going to do is uh so like for people that like buy tickets right mm. um if Have they them, like if, write shit no if they want to put their name in a bucket to do two minutes of comedy holy shit in front of you know 150 200 people oh geez yeah but it don't like it'd be kind of catered yeah well it, no it has to be some by the buys tickets because I don't want just every comic comic and open mic are just showing up and putting their name in the bucket like right. it's gonna be somebody that's like fresh yeah well no not even that just somebody that paid to be there yeah like well yeah. they're gonna be fresh too <laughs> they're gonna be really green I feel like I, a lot of people I'm sorry okay yeah go for it like I feel like a lot of people who are like audience members they don't want to talk like even when I interact with them they're like oh, don't talk to me you know no but they're will be some that do want to there will be some aspiring comedians there and then also it is a way to get the some of the you know 40 to 50 open micers in attendance to to actually pay to be there yeah that'd be interesting (laughs) i had a a little racist thought uh never mind (laughs) continue I forget. I don't this even is, know how you could like where that oh, could have went racist. I was like, we got to get a Chinese guy up there. Uh, <laughs> Wong Pang. Yeah, he, no, 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 I'm talking straight uh, off fob. I think <laughs> Wong already asked me. Uh, who else asked me? Holden asked me. DeShazo. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, ben Daniels asked me. Okay. Oh, uh, Ben. Yeah, he's dude. I watched his set last Thursday, and I've never actually seen him do stand up. But he fucking, he's fucking murdered. funny, dude. He's, he's so funny. He's, he's funny as shit. And it's all so nonchalant, but then he hits you with this dark, dude, like, abortion yeah. His name joke. on Instagram is very dark yeah. comedy. He digs deep. Like, yeah. he really does. Yeah. 
I've never actually like seen him do stand up. So it was like, okay, I know that he's kind of a little darker and whatever, but complexion wise, he's he shimmers in the nighttime. But <laughs> <laughs> he's got the uh, Edward Cullen <laughs> uh, Twilight look, you know? He's like, yeah, he farts glitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that was a saying that my grandpa always would call gay guys. He farts glitter. <laughs> yeah. I said to, uh, Will has that that bit about how, you know, his uh, older redneck family, they don't just call people gay. They always have, like, these little Funs, metaphors for yeah, it. Yeah, fun know? idiotisms or whatever. A little light in the foot or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, Get real he, creative with it. <laughs> so how was uh, hot dogs the long way. Yeah. <laughs> so how was uh, that show in Galveston? It was uh, uh, probably the worst it's been. Yeah. It oh. was still all right. It was yeah. still all right. Because usually it's always a good turnout. So Leo See? did 45? No, no, no. <laughs> Leo didn't there. come. What it was was um, the whole audience was Jude's family. Yeah. Like all, and I couldn't stop making that like part of the set. It was because he was hosting that night? Yeah. Or? Well, I mean, they had a beach house there. We, dude. Dude, the podcast with Jude was insane. Oh, you already recorded a podcast? Yeah, with we Jude? did. So we drove there with Joshua Jordan. Very fun combo. Yeah, that yeah. one. That one had me cracking up, dude. Josh is so funny. Josh is and hilarious. then immediately at like we stopped recording, we got to Jude's place. We set up in the the second story, and dude, Jude was already outside waiting like it's Christmas, dude. He, yeah, he, he was, was probably so telling excited. his family, and it was so pure, like he was. Like, oh, we're going to do the podcast. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Let's, let's find a spot. Let's record it. And the first question that John asks was, what's your stance on abortion? <laughs> 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 and, and, dude, I grimed him, too. I was like, no, so what's your stance, dude? I want to hear it. <laughs> That's like, great. And then he was like, I don't know. I don't really think about it. And then Josh comes in. He's like, That's okay. Like, you know what? You're 12. But we're like, all thinking it. Like, what is his stance? Yeah, David called him, like, gay like, five times. <laughs> David called this 12-year-old gay, like, four or five times. I'm asking him uh, about abortion. And the best question of the whole interview, barely an interview, but the best thing was Joshua asking this poignant, beautiful question of how he got into comedy. or how his so well. Yeah, and then me and John were like... Fag. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Well, we made it uh, eight minutes without saying uh, homophobic oh, slur, yeah. so that's the new record. Well, you're, you're in the presence of Choke City, baby. <laughs> this is yeah, dude. Choke City boys are here, man. Yeah. I'm assuming yeah. this is we're, this is yours. Yeah, we'll do ours. Yeah, we'll do yeah. we'll do mine first. Yeah, this is. Well, duo cast. This is we're we're gonna get hot. Yeah, <laughs> you're so, not ready. Uh, so David's been on the podcast before, so John will yeah, dude. lean towards you a little bit. <laughs> my first my first appearance on uh, Secret Jackets. So how long have uh, you been doing comedy? Let's see. I started um, like a week after you did, right? Because you started, um, so um, started Halloween. Yeah, so you started right? around the middle of November. The first week of November. So I think the 6th. 6th of November. Right? Was uh, Axel Rad your first Yeah, one? Axel yeah. Rad, and then we went to Secret. After. That was a fucking meat grinder. <laughs> Secret or Axel Rad? It was yeah. Axel Rad um, first, and then we, we went You to did Secret. a set that night, too, at uh, Secret, Secret right? Yeah. And then I remember you like texting me like, I don't think Axel Rad's is for me. <laughs> Yeah, you were like super like. Ah. Yeah, I, I was I was intimidated by like the one minute thing. I was like, I'm still trying to figure out word. Like, it's so hard to get words out. But honestly, it was a, like you were right. Like, it's it's so much better when you start because it helps you get out all the bullshit in your jokes because there's so much of it. My first time at Axelrod was so bad, dude. It was really? so bad. Like so. That was when everybody got to do two sets, at mm -hmm. least for sure. And yeah. I got up the first time, and I looked at this lady sitting in the front row, and she looked at me like I was solely responsible for 400 years of oppression. <laughs> and I froze. Oh, Did, I get that look a lot. I froze, didn't say one joke, and just walked right off the stage. Yeah. And then when I came back for the second minute, I literally just said street jokes like yeah. that my dad told me when I was a kid, and those did not go well mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, yeah, dude. You um, the first time you won 
we were in the finals together. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, I was like, man, I was hot that I night. I was pretty much done with it. Then. Once I won, I was like, I'll never come back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then <laughs> I guess that one with Gideon was the last time Gideon. you did it, probably. Yeah. Or what, I just did was, that for the Instagram followers. Yeah. I, did you get? I got so, like uh, probably 100 that night from it. And then when it posted on YouTube, I got a bunch more. Was and, it in uh, the they, final clip, like your Instagram, like when you uh, shouted it out on the YouTube? Yeah, really. And uh, a bunch of like I I noticed because people I, I didn't even know the video was up until I started seeing comments all over my YouTube, like uh, oh, or shit. all over my Instagram, like who so, else is here from Gideon's thing? Who else is here? From right, thing? I saw you post that in the group chat. Mm. So it's still on like YouTube right now. We, yeah. Oh, I gotta watch that. How many views does it have? It was at like a uh, hundred thousand when Dude, I checked. Dude, that's it. Yeah. really good. That's really good. Yeah, that's I mean, awesome. Because you got you guys said it was like it was like a bad turnout. It was the the crowd was full when it well, started. It was a Thursday. They they don't it, really do Thursdays. It just dude, it, the crowd was terrible. Yeah, like ever the, since like Thursdays are weird, man. Like we had to bark harder than we've ever barked to like get, get people, people up there. Up so that like nobody really wanted to be. Do you guys have to tell them like there's a famous streamer here? Yeah, basically, and then like the people in the chat could like pay to like do talk to text, so you're getting like heckled by people online that just paid like forty dollars to heckle you. Well, God, imagine if real shows were like that. That'd be awesome. (laughs) If if you're getting paid forty dollars to get heckled, heckle me. Like I said, I literally just did it to shout out my Instagram. Yeah. I got, I'd say probably in total, two hundred fifty followers from it. It's really good. Every like time active. I look at your account, you have like an extra two thousand people. I'm yeah. like, God well, damn! It's been crazy. So like, I when I got on Kill Tony, I had twenty eight hundred. Oh, so you're right. and like then, quite a following. And then after, like by the time it it died down, I was at like thirty one hundred, and then I spent like two months getting like four hundred, which I thought was like a pretty solid. One and then it just started like when I posted that one video, the one that's at like almost five million plays right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just started like going like faster and faster. And I was like, I remember I told my girlfriend, I was like, Oh, I think I'll hit like 4,000 followers pretty soon. And I was like 120 followers away, and she goes, Yeah, you'll probably hit it like by the end of the week. It was like Tuesday or something, and mm-hmm. then I hit it like six hours later. And now I'm at, uh, I hit 6,100 today. Oh, and yeah. So I went up 2,600 followers in the last 10 days. All without having to show your tits. Yeah. How many ladies are in the DMs? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, would, I would really pay attention to that. Yeah, pretty, he's a taken man. Yeah, dude. I'm pretty, f- I know, pretty I know. faithful, solid dude. The girls like the guys who are taken, though. Yeah, it's usually how it goes. It's always how it goes. Dude, I I um the comic vault guy hit me up and I I I do I'm so bad at like not looking at my requests. I almost forgot about it. And I'm like, oh shit. He invited me to do a show on a paid spot. Was and it I, Jacinto? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he invited me to do one too. Are you going? Uh yeah, he didn't hit me with the date yet, but he wants to know F words is what he said. Which, it doesn't have to be clean, just no which, F words. W- which, which one? Which one? That's yeah. my first thought. Yeah. I only say fuck, so ah. I, don't say, I don't really say the other one in my sets anymore. No, so. me neither. Anymore. <laughs> or just any, there's nowhere in my set where it would go. We could find a place for it. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny is, um, so I posted that uh, side-by-side picture of like when I started versus now and how I've lost like 70 pounds since I started. Yeah. And uh, this guy, uh, Travis... Drum, I think is his name. He's uh, from the, one of the Kill Tony groups. Super cool dude. He's like real active in the Kill Tony groups. He's He lives like far away from the closest open mic. So he has to drive like, I think, four hours to get to an open mic. What? Yeah. And, uh, but he commented, um, it's a good thing that all your jokes weren't fat jokes. And I, that really like got me thinking because mm-hmm. like that is. You missed the go- a whole. Well, no, that's a go to for a lot of. Fat guys, fat yeah. comedians and i like so i started trying to like process like why i don't have fat jokes and i think it's because like even though i've always been like fat like my whole life like i've always been a fat guy i've never been like 
the fat guy that got picked on for being fat. Mm, you know what right. I mean? Like I played football and or oh. like, you know, and then after high school I was like doing music, performing in front of like thousand people on a weekly basis. So I was like like I didn't I never had that like fat, like low self esteem that had like required self deprecation to like be confident. Oh. So I guess I just carried over and I started doing comedy where it's like I didn't have to like self deprecate based on my size hey, you really now that i think of it you only have like one one like fat guy joke kind of which one is uh i don't know that's oh fat forrest gump yeah that's it that's it yeah, yeah i don't even have an i need to get some skinny guy jokes yeah yeah, yeah. as soon as you do that you'll start putting on weight yeah, yeah. like yeah i feel like guys just don't know what to talk about so they're like oh fat jokes okay yeah. You have I more think things just, to talk about. Like I said, I think it's um, uh, a defense mechanism to an extent. Like, uh, I'm, I'm going to make fun of myself before somebody else can. Right. I don't. I don't under really understand that. Just because I was never like bullied, so I don't have any we of that start. kind of fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop, guys. <laughs> queer <laughs> got that but it's not like it's fine it doesn't fucking shatter my ego yeah you not have gay. to ha- you I have to have an ego to get shattered though yeah yeah i guess so i feel like i'm uh, this is gonna be fucking egotistical but i feel like you should hold that mic a little closer to your face testing testing that's, there you go that's good yeah uh, what was i talking about yeah being gay know. or some shit yeah no no, no, no not no. having an ego you were gonna be honest with us yeah, that be hardly ever us. happens, huh? <laughs> Usually I'm just... David B. comes out of the closet. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Secret Let's Society of Matching Jackets. No, not again. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna clip it to where it's just like, David B. came out of the closet, and then it's like like 10 minutes ago where he was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Do the Cam Patterson. I, I love gay people. <laughs> Dude, I've noticed I've been doing shaka hands a lot lately. It's pretty and lame. And I kind of hate it. <laughs> it's pretty lame, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, every, someone comes yeah, up to me and dabs starts. me up. I'm like, what's up? It's super and I, lame. I'm not like, I'm at that point in my life where. There's a couple of comedians that do that in the Houston comedy scene. And every time I see it, I'm like, that's so fucking lame. Who? I'm not going to say names on here. I'm not you oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. We'll say it on your podcast yeah. in, 40, in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't I know. I can't wait to see. Are you going to make you're gonna make merch? You need to sell jackets. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. I'd buy a jacket. Satin jackets. Yeah. Uh, Assless like, chaps to match. No, nah, I was thinking like, uh, like, like letter jackets. Okay. All yeah, right. I like cool. that. And uh, for the, I was telling David for the, birthday party we're gonna do cups okay and, uh on one side it's gonna say thursday laughs and then on the other side be the secret group logo and then david's logo at the bottom so you're gonna have both um both rooms for your no birthday? i'm just gonna do the main room okay yeah that was one of the things about getting the main room was leaving the second room open so they could still do best of mm, okay oh that's that night well i mean can you like, like if it starts like getting crazy in there? Can you like not commandeer it, but like? No, I mean I think regardless, I'll let them do best of. But if it gets to, so like the music starts at midnight, so what I might do is just get with Patrick and them about at midnight. Once the music starts, people can you know listen to the bands or they can go the dirty the show be part of of the of the event. Mm-hmm. You guys still trying to do that uh, live thing? Yeah, doing it next weekend. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's exciting. Dude, that's going to be fun. But it, it, they're probably not going to get a lot of views on it. What, is it going to be on tw- Twitch or something, YouTube? No, we're not going to live stream it. We're going to record it live and then post it on YouTube. Oh, okay. And they're going to do that like every week or something? No, I think maybe once a month. All right. What is YouTube like the hardest one to get followers on? It seems like it. Uh, yeah, I'm at like 820 right now. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to 
like podcast listeners, like um, if a podcast has a hundred listens, I think it's in the top forty to thirty five percent of all podcasts. And on my YouTube, like if you if you put together the downloads from Spotify, Apple, uh, just basic online streams, and then add the YouTube one in as well. But with YouTube, you have to look at the length of the video and then divide it by the hours because it's not like it just if somebody watches it for like eight minutes, I don't count that. You know what I mean? So, but if it's like a hundred hours of watch time, then I'll count that as a hundred uh, podcast. Like we're talking about math now. Yeah, dude, you lost me once. You <laughs> yeah, me and David's retarded. I thought you only had a problem like, with letters. Well, oh no, we're both, both like great. I was actually worse at math. I like how every episode of Choke City just comes like back we're to retarded. being retarded. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's dude, how we met. Dude, well, the, <laughs> when Josh was like coming to the realization that we're that you both guys idiots met in special ed <laughs> class, it was so great, dude. Uh, oh, by the way, it's six degrees of Kevin Bacon, ah. not three degrees. And it, uh, it actually he, comes he from know what it is. It's six mm-hmm. degrees of separation. So, um, it's and it's actually a mathematical fact that anyone in the world can be connected to anyone else in the world through six degrees of separation. Yeah, you lost us again. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> what? So is Hitler close to us? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that wouldn't. I feel like that wouldn't even be like. Uh, that wouldn't even be six, right? Because. Uh, World War Two, Romania was conquered by the Nazis. Wait, does that have something to do with the butterfly effect? <laughs> no, the but- I know that. Do you know what the butterfly effect is? It's like if you like step on a bug like fifty years ago, like the like. No, if a butterfly flaps its wings in China, it'll cause a hurricane in no, America. It's, <laughs> it's the theory that the butterfly migrations in Africa have something to do with hurricane formations. Because it's of all so the, much more specific than I because thought. Because of all the wind. That's so generated. any slight change can ve- it adds a variable to the world. Yeah, that's like that. what I thought it's it meant. Yeah, but it, you're saying it actually has something to do with like weather patterns and butterflies. Well, and that's the the basis of the theory, but the the foundation of the theory is that everything oh, okay. has a, an effect right. on everything right. else. But six degrees of separation is real. There's actually a dude on TikTok that. Um, like people will be like uh just show him a person right like a random person celebrity whatever and he has to do six degrees of separation but find pictures of the people together and he's always successful so like they'll be like this person and he like shows a picture of with like that person and some other person then that person with some other person that person with some other person then he's with the person I still don't get this as a as a concept. I'm gonna have to dive down some YouTube rabbit holes. It's a pretty basic concept. So it's like if you and I took a picture, mm-hmm. and the end goal is Vin Diesel, right? And then if you have a picture with uh, Burt Kreischer, and then Burt Kreischer has a picture with uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, you know, and then Daniel Radcliffe and Vin Diesel have a picture together. You're six degrees of separation from, uh, from six degrees is the maximum. Yeah, it could be less. Yeah. So, and it's with anyone in the world. What does this have to do with Kevin Bacon? So it's called six degrees of separation, but other people call it. It became a game to do six degrees of Kevin Bacon, where they yeah. would just connect Kevin Bacon instead of two random. See, people. I think in that podcast, I was conflating it with like. Uh, conflating it. I was like, yeah, I don't think it. that's I, a word. <laughs> yeah, I, I misuse that word constantly. Uh, but thinking about, there's a game on uh, on like YouTube that I see these fuckers play. It's uh, to get to Adolf Hitler on Wikipedia. You're on all kinds of watch lists. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, of course. I love, Shane, that's Gill- the- I love Shane Gillis's bit where it was like. That's how it starts being a Republican. It's like you just get really into World War II documentaries. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of being a Republican. Dude, I bleed red, white, and blue, dude. When we were driving to uh, Angleton, it was me and Youngblood, and uh, I think the guy's name is Jesse Saldano. He's the one doing that chicken and tacos show at the improvs with uh, Jeff Joe. Yeah. Um, So I do this thing where I kind of troll 
people, right, about like my political beliefs. Yeah. Um, like, like yeah, like I'm conservative, but I always just pretend to be like very dumb about it, mm-hmm. yeah. just to like see what they say, right? So, uh, the the Jesse dudes in the back, or whatever, and I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, I like right wing comedy, and they're just like, define right wing comedy, you know? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Even though this this person leans left, like pretty hardcore, like. When I think of their comedy, I think of right wing. I was like Bill Burr, right? And they're like, "That's not right wing. That's just like angry, like macho dad." You yeah. know, I'm like, "Yeah, right wing." Like, <laughs> that, like that's right. I mean, it's not wrong, but uh, I don't know. I like to play dumb when it comes to people that I know are like super, super left. liberal. Yeah. yeah, I just like I just pretend to be an idiot. Like one night, uh, I was talking to Tess and McKenzie. And I was just like, yeah, dude, Joe Rogan's like the greatest comedian ever. Like, you know, like not material wise, but if you look at like what he's doing for comedy and this, and they were just like, so like, you just see it in their face. They're like this, they're melting. They're like this fucking alpha bro motherfucker. Like Mm -hmm. they're like, they're like, she started naming off like, I don't know Well, she said. Some good ones like Louie, Louie's in my top five for sure. But she starts saying these other ones. It was like all these like women comics I've never even heard of, and I was just like, "Yeah, no, bro, nah. If it's got a vagina, it ain't funny." Nah, there's some great women <laughs> comics. I just never heard of the ones she was talking about. Yeah. Who's your top five? My top five. No, who's your top four? Who's your Mount Rushmore of stand-up comedy? You get Patrice, four. Patrice, uh, Norm, Patrice, Norm, and um, well, David Tell's got to be up there. Mm. Yeah, probably probably Bill Burr. Um, yeah, yeah. Who's that guy you were telling me? He was just at the riot. Phil Hanley. Yes, he was great. I feel like um, Dave Attell and uh, who you said Patrice, Dave Attell, Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. I feel like I always hear Norm and uh, like Norm. We we did this on the drive to and norm was on uh young woods mount rushmore yeah um but we th- we also talked about how david tell like like t- technically you know like as a comedian is like one of the greatest of all time but not necessarily like like our favorites like like yes he's one of the best comedians ever to but do it but it's, it's just a not- weird sense of stand-up that he not to get in the weeds about it but it's you have to get him to get his comedy. Yeah, but ev- his structurally is just like every single word in that set, like has some, like is there for a reason. Is not well, not, not a lot a of sing- fat. Not yeah. a single word of his stuff is fat. He also influenced like so many comedians. You know, like I mean, people talk about how like for years in the nineties or the two thousands, people would just try to be a tell like at open mics it i used to just... watch insomniac with david tell oh yeah he had his show on comedy central i uh my mount rushmore would be sam kinnison uh-huh. uh bob saget bob saget yeah that's something that, that one always, that one always surprises good. people yeah uh, he's good louis ck and uh mm, it was like a five-way tie for the last spot. It was just like... Yeah, really it's hard for me, Mount Rushmore, because I'm thinking of guys who like really... Um, I don't Rodney know. Rodney Dangerfield. Really like had an impact. Rodney um, Dangerfield. See, and that's another oh. That's another thing that when it comes to the my Mount Rushmore of stand-up comedians is that it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's subjective, so it's all our personal opinion. What's... Yeah. what's um, both you guys, what's your favorite stand-up special of all time? One that I could just toss on. Your and favorite just one. It like you out. will laugh out loud each time you watch it. Ooh. Uh, so for a while, it was the fluffy special. I forget which one, but it was when I was like 14 or something. Fluffy was my absolute favorite at that point. Uh-huh. I don't know why. It just would make me giggle every time. Yeah. That and um, are we talking to this day or just yeah. like like 
at the time. To this day. Oh. To this okay. day, Sam Kinison's first special. But we're talking at the time, uh, Seinfeld special that I think was the one that came out in like 99 or maybe, okay. maybe a little. Is that the one that. after he retired from? Yeah, I think so. It's like, I think it's where he just burns all his material. Yeah. Like he literally just burns everything. Yeah. He has the joke about like the, the, the faucets in the airport. He's like, why do they have the button? And then it just like stops on its own. So because you're like sitting there trying to do it. And it's like, do they think we're just going to flood the bathroom? Like, come on, we flooded the bathroom. He's like, what about our flight? Who cares? Let's go. <laughs> just running in the parking lot. But like, that's, you know, watching that at like 11 years old. Yeah. Is, is different. You know, it's, so it doesn't really, like I rewatched it a month ago. Dude, and it's still funny, but it doesn't hold up. Yeah, Norm Macdonald's uh, the hit Hitler's dog. Oh. I laugh my ass off every time I watch that. I oh love, my god! I love Shane Gillis's first special on YouTube. That's probably my favorite one. It's so good. His uh, his what's the new one on Netflix? Uh, Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, Is something, sleeping something dogs? Dogs. Some dogs. Something beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs. Mm. Yeah, uh, but that one makes me laugh. Like laugh out loud still. I but, really liked uh, Daniel Tosh's first special. Oh, the one with the homeless people. Uh, yeah, for breezing the homeless. That yeah. no, I think that may have been his second. The, his first homeless joke was like um, throwing change at homeless people. What's the dude that always wears the suits that went to John Mulaney? Re- rehab? Yeah, John Mulaney. Oh, that's another good one. That dude. That dude. I, I just recently started watching his stuff. That you got to watch funny. his show on Netflix. Everybody's in L.A. His his monologues are like so good. Oh man, how did I not say Chappelle on my Mount Rushmore? Chappelle's Chappelle's like he's like one of these rappers, like like Kanye almost. Like he was so good. And then now it's 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 different and people are like we want old Chappelle, you know? No, nah, it's just it's I think that most comedians get to that point in their career. Like if you look at like Carlin it just becomes like social commentary at some point yeah. rather than just like kind of like but like killing them softly has got to be oh considered one of the greatest yeah. specials of all time yeah i like uh, watching a, a stand up special when i was younger i was like fuck dude that looks impossible or just even watching like youtube clips of stand up i always felt like ah oh, shit that's impossible but now that i'm doing it i'm like yeah it makes sense like Dude, you I just work on that material, and then you're ready for it. Well, because not us, but they've had they have this fucking well of of what they know works. It I don't think like I've ever nature. watched any of Patricia's Patricia's specials. Really? Yeah, just clips. You got to, dude. I mean, what is it? The elephant elephant in the room was so called. good. Yeah. There's so many comedians that when I go back and rewatch Chappelle show. That I didn't never realize were on Chappelle's yeah, show. Bill Pat- Burr. Patrice Bill Burr was being on there. Oh, I knew Bill Burr was on there. Uh, Patrice, uh, Rich Voss. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. All those guys were on it. John Mayer was on there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Let's dude. see what happens when we play drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss being like I, there. There was a certain sense, like when I was younger and watching a stand-up special, like just tossing it on, and this feeling in the air—I don't know—I can't replicate it now. Is that weird? No, nah, because it's like the magician that's, watching. That's just that's just nostalgia, maybe. maybe. It's just your youth. It's just it has. It's like that with a lot of stuff. Like the first time you ever go to a baseball game, or you know, it's just it well, doesn't like, hit the you, same. When you like, look at the world through your eyes and you're a child I everything has that like the wonder fact that, we're, that we're doing it it's like well like people say when they start making movies they start directing movies they don't watch it the same way before they did yeah once you see how the sausage is made <laughs> maybe but i don't know i got that feeling like when we did uh the podcast with jude because he was so fucking amped because it's like the t- could, eyes of a child. That's yeah. what you're not getting about this. Yeah. You have never heard the expression childlike innocence? Yeah, no, I understand. The wide-eyed wonder Dude, of a child. He, kept like, he, he brought it up to me multiple times. Um, He's like, oh, I thought he David was, like, oh, was going to be again. more racist. <laughs> he was like, oh, let's do it again. I want to be on there like next week. I was like, Dude, you'll get you. Trust me. You'll get you. He yeah. should really have his own podcast. He should. Oh, that, they're trying to. They're getting there. He, uh, Dude, he really he needs a whole marketing team behind him. To be honest, 
I mean, he's he's gonna make it. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he dude, just, just have as much fun as I think. That's you know? uh, that's also it. Don't even worry about blowing up have, or anything. Have fun, but the have the, a goal the, in mind. No, have he needs to just focus on having fun, writing comedy, doing his thing. But the people around him, the people on his team, need to put together a game plan and like capitalize on the motion that he already has because like i'll look at some of the comments on like the video that i made for him i think it's like 1.3 million and i look at the comments on it and some of the people commenting are like legit influencers in like that live in la or like you know like djs that tour just like 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 people that wow big you know yeah like That's millions insane, of followers and dude. stuff that's insane so i'm saying he needs some kind of dude marketing team behind him as big as he is loved there's some people in like that i've heard rumblings they just like they don't get it here in Houston. oh locally yeah, yeah i've heard a bunch of that from the beginning i've heard a bunch of it. yeah what do you mean they're just like oh it's just a gimmick oh his dad writes all his jokes oh, oh yeah that is not true i was like his dad doesn't write all his jokes give us some credit yeah <laughs> <laughs> That pre cum bit? <laughs> Who do you think wrote that? Yeah. Nah, he he's just he's a good kid, dude. Yeah. Like he's a good kid and I, I like I want him to succeed the way that he wants to, but honestly, I just want him to have fun with this. Yeah. yeah. That is like cuz I'm having as m- the most amount of fun that I've ever had I think in that, life. I think the difference is is that you guys aren't uh aren't parents. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, like, that's w- true. Where I'm looking at it from, like, a parent's perspective is, like, all right, like, if you're going to do this, you need to, like... And we're looking this. at like, it like, you're looking at uncles. It, yeah, like, oh, it's just, it's just fun. It's like, no, nah, dude, like, this kid has an opportunity to make millions of dollars in the next few years. Next yeah. few years? Yeah. Next few years. Yeah. Shit. If he becomes an... Dude, if he becomes a, even just an Instagram influencer... Yeah. Gets a couple million followers. They say, like, you don't want to, like, be, like, doing, like, touring with an hour until you're, like, f- at least four or five years in. Yeah, closer to eight. Um, But, you know, who's to say he doesn't get a solid 20, bring a few guys on the road with him. Yeah. Create more, you know, because you got all these guys that, like, are on uh, TikTok and stuff like that. They're touring and just doing 20, 30 yeah. Like if you look at the, because um, my my buddy sends me like the list of availables for like touring comics and stuff, eighty percent of them are just like Instagram and TikTokers that just put together a twenty minute set and they're just touring. Wow. God damn. I heard even uh, Big J Okerson, he has like twenty minutes of actual material and the rest is just crowd work. Yeah, he's just really he's good at crowd work monster. though. Yeah. Like Dog Belly, that another great special. Mm-hmm. Just. End to end, talking about fucking uh, Michael Jackson's cock. It's <laughs> ends Dude, it with dog so, belly. He's so fucking funny, bro. I mean, but you see, what's his name? Uh, Luis J. Gomez ate that kidney stone. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, yeah on fuck. Kill Tony, he ate a kidney stone. It's disgusting. Did you watch any it more of the like, episode? I, I, yeah, I watched that part of it. Uh, actually, I watched the whole thing. What did you I think skipped, of it? I'm, I'm, it was a lot of good parts, and then a lot of like bombs. I'm just, uh, I hate to just like sound jaded about it, but it's just like, it's just not the same for me anymore because I feel like a lot of the comedians that like just do really good, like comedy wise, like they don't get like nearly as much out of it as some people that are I mean, more that, on the mediocre that Jewish side. guy, he was pretty funny. Yeah. His interview was great. Yeah. His interview was super funny. His but material was all right. His too. material was all right, but how many people have you seen that had way better minutes than that? Yeah, are you guys talking how, about Kill Tony? Yeah. yeah. How many people have you seen like, like applause breaks? Like, and you know what I mean? Like, like uh, the perfect example to me would be Heath. Like, if you go back and look at like Heath's minute, which is actually a minute and His a half. His first minute. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of reaction. Like, I feel like that's the kind of, like, reaction that should it be takes. rewarded, you know? Yeah. And I just, I don't feel like that's the case. But granted, who am I to even have an opinion on it? But that's just, like, it, it loses its luster from, you know, and I think that probably has something to do with me 
being more involved in comedy in general because I'm looking at it through more, a different lens. Yeah, I'm looking at it as a comedian instead of just a fan of the show at yeah. this point. I mean, I remember watching that show and I would do the same thing where I would skip over the bombs because I was uh, like, I would still cringe. And now it's even worse where I'll like, if someone doesn't make like a joke within like first five, 10 seconds, I'm fucking on, I'm fucking skipping over them and their interview. I just, the interviews get really uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I just, like, what's the, the guy that just got the golden ticket? Uh, some Jewy broad. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he's great. And, by all means, deserves a golden ticket. Yeah. But, like, I feel like people like Trish Smart. Deserve, yeah. Like, I she feel like good. she had, I feel like she had a better minute for sure. Maybe her interview wasn't quite as good, but it was still great. But, like, but he's I think just kind of ne- collecting retards. Yeah. I just, just, I think there needs to be more emphasis on the actual comedy of it. But then it wouldn't make the show what it is. Yeah. It could still be a blend of it. I feel like it's got to be a balanced pendulum. And right now it's just so far one way. Dude, it's all like aura merchants, you know, just like people who are like off aura merchants. You never heard that term? No. I just heard it like the other week. It's like just people that. He's like, I just heard the other week and I'm committed to. Yeah. (laughs) Using (laughs) it. Misusing it. I smell a new minute. (laughs) I mean, it make uh, it's a lot of people like with funny hair or like a gimmick or something. Oh, okay. Like how I grew out a mullet. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you had you had jokes, you know. I had a great joke. Yeah, yeah. I, I rewatched it yesterday for the first time in a while, and it was it was kind of weird to like. Re- w- yeah, because you're past that material now. Yeah, but I just I feel like I'm gonna be chasing that feeling forever now, dude. Like yeah. I like I rewatch it and it's like when I say like the probably cheaper to listen to Akon at home and get a fifteen second applause break where just everyone is dying laughing, like in the fucking mothership in a sold out crowd. Like I'm gonna be chasing that fucking high for the rest of my life. I bet a lot of the fucking Houston scene is chasing that high. Cause as soon as you got on that it fucking flooded with Houston comics. Yeah, Treasures episode should be out in like two weeks. Yeah, how'd she do? A little she's got joke a small book. book. Yeah, she's a Mark Norman. Is really nice to her and let her finish her joke though. Oh, that's cool. Um, all right. I th- that's the <laughs> another thing is like, I felt like when I did it, everybody thought that it was going to be way easier. No, and even the people that that have gotten on and got big books. Yeah, you know, and everything like. Like, is it just me and Trey are the only two to get Secret Show? Yeah, and uh, what? Uh, who I else is Danny gone? got Secret Show. Yeah, he was before us, though. Yeah, he was that a year was... and a half before us. Oh, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about, like, like the, the new the last, wave. Yeah. Dude, that's got to be so hard to go back to, like, Bad Astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> I went the next day. Oh, yeah, I got with the, the big book. Bu- with the book, dude. The next day, I was like. But, like, to perform in front of, like, Oh, I killed it. Drunk yeah. guys. Do, do you that, remember that? Yeah, that, that was, first. Because you didn't give a shit. You were so hot for Dude, like no, that a was, month. You were that just was like, like when everything cha- it was like it was like a switch just happened. And every like I just killed it. Yeah, like, you had like so a, many times. You had like an air about you. I don't know. There's something about like the confidence that just like I don't know. It radiates after that. Yeah. Because you were already doing good before that, but then you hit the fucking kill Tony switch and then came back and you were like, Well now I'm fucking But to be fair You had I the did material come, behind I did you. no, I did get taken down, you know, got humbled qu- pretty quick the after second the second one. appearance. But I I still feel like my minute was good on there. Like, if yeah. you go like why do you like, think it went that way? Was it you think it's because you I mean, called out Tony? Yeah, or? he doesn't like when you. I didn't call. First of all, I didn't call him out, but he doesn't like it when you bring up meeting him outside of the show. Why? And then also, he was in a shitty mood that night because, like, uh, I think the first three people that they pulled weren't there, so the show was just running real behind. He was in a pissy mood. So, hmm. plus, if you look at the guests. Like, cause I when I met um, Rich Voss at Seeker Group when he 
did that weekend. Oh, yeah. that he did the weekend at um, the riot. He came over to Secret Group. Like, he was going to get on the Dirty Show. Um, and he was like, he's like, dude, look at who the guests were. It's like, it's me, Eleanor, and Dom Herrera. He's like, we're known as being the asshole comedians. Like, you should have, like, like he's going to match that energy. You know what I mean? Like, but you look at what's like Matt McCusker is on, and he's like, and he's a know, sweetheart. Yeah. He's silly. Oh, so he does match. That makes a lot more sense now. So it's just luck of the draw, really. So I bet if you get pulled again and if you get with someone like, I don't know, Tony Hawk. I don't know those like. Wasn't that who was it when Morgan was on it? Yeah. Tony yeah. Hawk. I'm excited on. to see Morgan's uh, set set best of the Thursday. bucket. Yeah, she just did, uh, I think it was Side Splitters in Tampa. It's every Thursday at the Secret Group, $5 entrance. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm working on uh, trying to get a pretty big booking for one of the Thursdays in October. Yeah, you're not going to divulge it here? No. Nah. Well, you know, it's, you already know who I've been trying to get for a little while. There's uh, like two or three people that I've been trying to get for a little while. Oh, okay. Like one of them, their, their schedule lines up with, uh, they have a show within driving distance the next night. So I'm going to try to add that day to their tour but we'll see how it goes hell yeah or if you just invite them if like a touring comics in houston it's always good you know how yeah it's well, not going to be in houston but he's going from one city to another city and he has to drive through houston oh, okay like he's in one city on wednesday one city on friday and there houston's in between them so if he can add one night to the tour make some extra money mm. I mean, it's always worth it. You can't it. say names, huh? Nah. We it's don't better. say names on secret jackets. Yeah, I will promo this. We're doing a, me and John, can I? Yeah. The, what? The true anomaly thing. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Me and John and maybe uh, Mike over here doing a show at True Anomaly. Don't add me in the maybe just yet. Well, you got to figure it out. I understand. You're not coming? I mean, I'll, I'll come support, but like, I All don't right. know if I can be involved with it yet. All right. Oh man, that's fine. I got a. It'll be fun. I, July fifth. Yeah, no, that's cool. I got a. Uh, out of respect, like like because I'm doing shows at Secret Group, like I want to make sure that they're cool with. Oh, if I I'm see. I'm gonna be doing. Oh, I get it. Involved. In yeah, because yeah. it's like right across the street, dude. Yeah, but I don't think um. We're no, not. But like you it. still have to ask. I don't I, think they're. I don't think they care. It's just that my. It's a respect thing. Yeah, it's my just personal like, integrity. Oh, I yeah. get it now. I would at least ask. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. It's, you don't want to be that guy that like, oh, well, I did this and ask for forgiveness now because then a uh, relationship changes and you don't want to be that fucking, that guy to do that. Mm. Yeah. I, I imagine they wouldn't care too much. I just realized this whole time I've been recording at 720p instead of 1080. Uh, what does that mean? Lower resolution. Yeah, it's lower resolution. So that's I'll, why I was fuzzy. Uh, well, I got it clearer now, but I'll change it before we start the next one. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. True anomaly. What's your goal in comedy, John? Uh, just make money, go on tour with my with my homies, with the bros. Yeah, dude. That's honestly, yeah. Just do this and get paid. I don't even. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just enough to pay the bills. So you just want to be a professional comic. Yeah. That's your goal. Just a career comic. Yeah. I would love to eventually have a special. Anybody that I'm a special? That I'm, pr that I'm proud of. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not just some, like, comedy club special. I don't, it'd be nice to have, like, a, a theater special. Something that's very Something. well thought out and, like, I don't know. It doesn't even have to be in a theater. It just has to be really good and really special to me. You know, yeah, because you only get a get first a load for, of this guy. Yeah, gay. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's like uh, Ross or whatever. It's like get a load of this fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that's, mean, that's David's goal too. Basically, when I asked him on the first episode, that's what he said, and uh, that's a cool goal. Yeah, what's your goal? I don't, dude. My, to be honest, I don't even know because it's like. I, I've said this before, but like the amount of like money that I would have to make doing comedy to like just equal like just my nine to five job 
like I would have to be like a pretty big comedian to to do that. Yeah, but know? having extra money while doing both. At some point, you can't be fully committed to both. Yeah, true. At a certain point, but right now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's already put strains on certain things. I already find it like it would be difficult to go get a career in something else. Like, you know, get a job for a, you know, some corporate job. Like, I wouldn't be able to stay out till two doing mics every night. Don't you work for your dad? Yeah, but I. <laughs> exactly. I'm saying, like, if I. Like, Ride that wave as long as you can, dude. Uh, yeah, that's Just what I'm saying. Just take over the family business. Like, people, like, they, uh, you know, they try to act like that's like, oh, a bad you, thing. No, yeah, dude, that's, that's what like, you're supposed that's to what do. You're supposed to do like yeah. that's the goal as a parent. Like, oh, sorry that John's dad's a freak, fucking great dad. Yeah. Like, sorry that David's family like set him up for success. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm saying just like, I I have a job where I can working for my dad. I can fucking sleep in a little more. Yeah. Come in. I wouldn't be able to if I had to wake up at like six a.m. I I wake up at six a.m. Oh, how do you do that? How do you do that? That's insane to me. Well, the first two hours of the day I work from home, so I wake up at six, and then I just I'm on my computer making sure that anything comes in till eight, and I get dressed and then go into the office. God damn, did I wake up at like? But I also don't stay out as late. If you notice, like, I don't hit yeah, the mics as late out. as I used to. No. I've kind of stopped doing that, too, because it's just, it's too much fucking, like, and it's not worth it most of the times to get that extra mic at 1 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also, not, there's no one there, and you're you're kind of like, I, I want to do it, but on the other hand, I also want money. <laughs> I've also just been booked for so many shows lately that it's I so I, hard to go I, back I feel, I feel like i just like either one don't, which sounds stupid and i really should make the time to do it but like i just don't have the time to do mics or try a I'm, whole new five minutes yeah or i'm getting enough stage time during the week just on book shows that like to keep me sharp you know so i don't have to necessarily do the mic which is stupid and but I need you try new mics. stuff at, at the book shows too yeah not as often as i'd like but yeah i do like tossing a, you know. Yeah, I've I've had just riffs that just turn into a minute. Oh, that's that always a, nice. Whoa. Like the you getting molested one. What? That's like <laughs> that's my opener now. No, the, really? There's a riff I did about you getting molested. Oh, okay. At the uh, at the at the Secret Society Matching Jacket show, you know your closers, the football coach joke, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, you went on right before me, so I just riffed and I was like. I was like, you know, I have a hard time fitting in with the comedy scene because most of these guys were class clowns, are molested. John was both. <laughs> yeah. So now I just, that's my opener, but I just change. To the host yeah, or whoever, yeah, whoever was before you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's an all-woman lineup. You can't. <laughs> yeah, that would be so much worse. It's like. I'd probably get canceled for that. Oh, like, yeah. Dude, we're on the riot tomorrow together. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I got Thursday laughs and the riot tomorrow. That's cool. Dude, let me. Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday? Yeah. Fuck. All right. Look at. Let me read off some of these Bookings. shows. All right. What are we? What day is today? Dude, I love how hard I had a migraine. I couldn't even. Asshole on my pants. That's I couldn't great. even do what's popping this week. I had a migraine. Oh. Uh, June 27th, Usual Suspects, Thursday Laughs. June 30th, 8th Wonder. Usual Suspects at the right? Yeah, okay. Unusual Suspects. That's the one I'm on. Thursday Laughs. June 30th, I'm on 8th Wonder, the Sunday show at uh, Secret. July 4th, The Riot, and Thursday Laughs. July 12th, San Antonio at the station. 13th, uh, The Green Room in Austin. The 13th, The Vulcan in Austin. Still waiting on confirmation for the Black Rabbit the same night. July 18th, Best of the Bucket. July 25th, Avant Garden. August 9th, Birthday Party. August 15th, Thursday Laughs at Vulcan. God damn. Damn, dude. And that's just like the ones like right now. Usually yeah. like at least two come every like a, week. week so like if you look at like between now and like middle of August, it's. That's a lot. You got a lot going on. Yeah. 
And you got to wake up at 6 a.m. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. Shit. Dude, I wake up at 8 and I'm still grumpy all day. All day. A bit of a curmudgeon. Yeah. yeah. Wake up at like 9. Dude, I, so I hard. fucking bucked up on my nephew the other day. <laughs> yeah, you told me about that. Dude, I was in a, such a shit. Like, dude, I was about to beat up a child. <laughs> no, he's 19. He's probably bigger than you, too. He is. He but he's got your, blonde hair. He could probably kick your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I would tell people I won. <laughs> David <laughs> fights dirty, though, dude. David just bites him. Dude, you know that move where you kick up dust and jack him in the throat? Pocket sand! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> boys, 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 boys. Yeah. All right. Um... Any closing words, John? Any closing words? Not really. I mean, if if you are a Houston listener, come out to our show at Drew Anomaly Friday. That would be awesome. Um, next Friday. Yeah, that July is July 5th. 5th. Yeah, Starting dude. at 8 o'clock. Tickets are free. The event It's free. It's free. Just come in. Insta. Have a good time with us. You know? Yeah, and you? check out Choke City. Check out Choke City. Follow me on Instagram at the John Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, no underscores. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a dig at me. Yeah. All, all yeah. my homies hate underscores. Yeah, dude. Yeah. We don't fuck with underscores except Dave. Yeah. Right. So it's uh, my Instagram's Davey underscore comedy. Uh, yeah, just follow me. Joke City Podcast. Shows. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. I might have told you in the group chat, but uh, me and Timely got a studio. Oh, nice. That's yeah. cool. It's, oh, that uh, one that you were shown? Yeah, so it's actually it's a recording studio, uh, and it's going to be a podcast studio. So I've got my uh, buddy's engineer. He's going to be recording musicians and rappers and stuff, and then uh, I'm going to be recording my podcast. And Are you other, doing other Secret Society podcasts. with Timely? No, she's, we're just sharing the space. So oh, she's okay. going to do her own thing. I'm going to do my own thing. Where is it? Uh, about 10 minutes from here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't say the fucking location. I just yeah, it's like close to like two ninety and six ten. Oh, so not too far from here. It's uh, not like who's giving like the address. Good, the address. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's a uh, that's a really nice spot, and I, it's it's about thirty minutes from my house, but I feel like having the Somewhere studio space uh, will make me more apt to do it. Plus, it's a money making opportunity because. My buddy is going to be, you know, charging probably 60 bucks an hour to do uh, record musicians and stuff. And then I get a cut of that. And then I'm going to charge people $50 an hour to do podcasts or if they want to edit it, it'd be extra. So that's yeah. awesome, dude. All right, man. Well, thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, yeah. we're at your house. So technically, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Anytime. You're always welcome. Fuck yeah, dude. The, dude, the, I wish I could. This is actually the Choke City studio. Yeah, this, that is, we're in. this is your living room. This is a nice <laughs> couch, though. We'll give Isn't you that. It? This yeah. is a very nice yeah. couch. All yeah, right, many guys. Riffs were had here. Y'all be sure to, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, be sure to follow on Spotify. My Instagram is at Mike Ryan Comedy. Thank you very much for listening. This is the Secret Society of Matching Jackets.